Hello. In this module, we will learn how to prove properties of probability measure. Let us first recall the probability axioms. As we know, there are three axioms of probability. Axiom 1, probability of any event A is always non-negative, that is greater than or equal to 0. Axiom 2, the probability of the sample space, the certain event is 1 and axiom 3 the probability of union of two events A and B is equal to sum of their probabilities P of A plus P of B probability of A plus probability of B provided that A and B are mutually exclusive events. This axiom 3 is the key axiom in proving the properties of probability measure. Indeed, a good clue to proving properties is to think of union of mutually exclusive events which directly or indirectly relates to the event of our interest and then apply axiom 3 and this will lead to the proof of different properties and we shall see that through some examples. So let us look at some example properties. Properties of probability measure. which is denoted by P of, can also be written as PR of the desired event. Let us take the first property. That probability of the complement of an event A that is P of A bar is equal to 1 minus P of A, probability of A. Now what are A and A bar or A complement? Let us just look at the Venn diagram. This is the sample space omega and let there be this event A so what is not in A is the A complement or A bar also denoted as A complement okay. but will uh, denote it by A bar only. So proof is as follows as we just mentioned that a good clue to proving properties is to think of two exclusive events, union of two exclusive events which somehow relates to our event of interest directly or indirectly. Here we have two events A and A complement which are exclusive obviously. So A union A complement is equal to the entire sample space as it is clear from the Venn diagram and it is the basic rule of set theory. So let us take probability on both sides. So probability of A union A complement is equal to probability of omega the sample space. Now on the left hand side, so on the left hand side we can apply axiom 3. Why? 
बिकॉज ए इंटरसेक्शन सिंस ए इंटरसेक्शन ए बार इज इक्वल टू फाइव ए एंड ए ए बार आर म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव इवेंट्स एंड ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड वी अप्लाई एक्सीम टू दैट इज पी ऑफ ओमेगा इज इक्वल टू वन एंड यूजिंग दैम वी कैन राइट ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड पी ऑफ ए प्लस पी ऑफ ए कॉम्प्लीमेंट इज इक्वल टू वन फ्रॉम वेयर द रिजल्ट फॉलोज पी ऑफ ए कॉम्प्लीमेंट इज इक्वल टू वन माइनस पी ऑफ ए सो दैट वॉज टू बी प्रूव लेट एस लुक एट द सेकेंड प्रॉपर्टी विच सेज दैट द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ एनी इवेंट ए is always less than or equal to 1 the proof for this property immediately follows from property 1 so proof from property 1 which is p of a bar is equal to 1 minus p of a now this must always be non negative the first axiom using axiom 1 and from where the result immediately follows that p of a must always be less than equal to 1 so that was to be shown let us take another property and learn how to prove it probability of the null event is equal to 0 and here again we think of union of two mutually exclusive events and we know that omega union phi is equal to omega the universal set union null set is equal to universal set that is the basic rule from set theory and we also know that the universal set intersection the null set is equal to the null set that means this implies that omega and phi are disjoint events mutually exclusive events using this we can immediately write that probability of omega union phi is equal to probability of omega and on the left hand side we apply axiom Three, which gives or let me just write apply axiom three we get probability of omega plus probability of phi is equal to probability of omega which is indeed one from axiom two but we need not actually write that. it clearly follows from here that probability of phi is equal to 0 so that is the proof now finally look at one of the very important results and learn how to prove it if we have two events a and b which are not mutually exclusive then the probability of their union p a union b is equal to p a plus p b minus p a intersection b and to understand the proof it is good to first make a venn diagram remember that venn diagrams are a good visual 
aid to understand the events to visualize the events however when diagrams themselves do not give the proofs the proofs must be mathematical so let us assume that there are two events a and b so there is a sample space then this is the event a and this is the event b and because they share some com common region they are not mutually exclusive we can identify different regions here as this can be thought of as a bar intersection b this region is a intersection b bar and the region here is a rather i should use a different color there so this is a intersection b now the event of our let us see how to prove this property well the event of our interest is a union b so let us see if we can write a union b as the union of two exclusive events a and b are not exclusive so can we write the same thing as a union of two mutually exclusive events and indeed indeed it is possible look at the event a the event a and this region a bar intersection b they do not overlap and therefore they are mutually exclusive and their union is same as a union b so let us write p a union uh, a union b as event a union event a bar intersection b now because uh, a and a bar intersection b are mutually exclusive we can apply probability and then apply axiom 3 let us see how to do that so applying probability on both sides so p a union b is equal to p of a union a bar intersection b now here we will apply axiom 3 now we can apply axiom 3 because a and a bar intersection b are mutually exclusive that means their their intersection is null therefore applying axiom 3 we get p of a union b is equal to p of a plus p of a bar intersection b here we are writing intersection uh, explicitly but uh, many times we just omit the intersection sign and we just write p of a bar b uh, that is equally acceptable but here we'll continue writing uh, intersection explicitly let us call it relation 1 and once again look at another event say b and try to write this event b as the union of two exclusive events and clearly this b comprises these two regions a intersection b and this one which is a bar intersection b and they are exclusive so let us write down so again think of two different exclusive events and write b as their union so b equal to a intersection b union a bar intersection b and take probability on both sides 
so probability of b is equal to probability of a intersection b union a bar intersection b and here we can apply axiom 3 because since a intersection b intersection a bar intersection b is a null set so applying it we get P of B is equal to P of A intersection B plus P of A bar intersection B from where we get the value of P A bar intersection B equal to P B minus p a intersection b let us call it relation number two now you can see from relation one and relation two we can substitute the value of p a bar intersection b into one and we get the final result so let us do that so from one and two we get p a union b equal to p a plus p b minus p a intersection b which is the desired result so that is to be proved that was to be demonstrated CVD. so in this module we applied the axioms of probability in establishing various properties of the probability measure to Summarize once again, the clue to proving properties is always to think of expressing the desired event as the union of exclusive events so that axiom 3 holds and the desired properties can be proved. So that is all for this module. Thank you.